Then just get it out of the way. I have, oh my gosh. <laughs> He's still in my heart. You know, when mm. I was just a little girl, I dreamed of this <laughs> moment. I was madly in love with Mark McCain, as every young girl in America was in love with you on The Rifleman. Oh, you're you so were sweet. just the most amazing <laughs> kid. And then years later, I got to do a pilot in LA with Chuck Connors, The Rifleman. Another pilot? <gasps> what? <laughs> I. And so then I shifted, my crush went from you to him. So sorry, but now that you're back again and just went on my shoulder, I'm, I'm back with you. So it's a delight to have you here. Thank we you. are just thrilled to have you at the Western Film Fair. I need to get some water. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but before we even start talking about The Rifleman and all your other yeah. acting, which everybody yeah. wants to hear about, I want to start with what you love so much and have been so... Uh, passionately doing over the last 25 years, the Johnny Crawford Orchestra. And um, tell me, how, I know you're from a, a musical family, a theatrical family, but how did that transition and passion for that music? Well, <clears throat> uh, when I was very young, my mother was always playing the piano. My grandmother was, had students that come to, came to the house to study violin. She was a violinist. Oh. And uh, all four of my grandparents were musicians. And I heard this wonderful music all the time. Mm. And then um, one Christmas day, I woke up and there was a, there, there was a, a, a little turntable for me in my bedroom and for my Christmas present. And next to it was a stack of 78s and they were all dance band recordings. Mm -hmm. And I had never heard Paul Whiten before. And Annette, um, uh, what's her name, um, from the 1920, late 20s, wonderful singer, Annette Hanshaw. And, um, and, and they were magical to me. And, and, as, and, and then I discovered Johnny Ray. I, I was a big fan of Johnny Ray and I, I did imitations of Johnny Ray uh, and, and became a Musketeer on the strength of that. And then after a few months, they, they discovered that I could sing, but I, I couldn't dance. And uh, I was faking it, uh, kind of. And so um, I was on the streets before the end of the season and uh, <laughs> looking for work here everywhere. And uh, I... Um, uh, I got a job as a um, an usher at, at, at the theater, but I, I lost that job because I wasn't tall enough. And, um, <laughs> and Hollywood's a rough place. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's a tear for every. F f there's a tear for every sigh in Hollywood. Every day's. Uh, weary thing in Hollywood. I don't know all the lyrics, but that's that's from a film mm. in 1931, and mm. and it's it's a wonderful song that I don't recall, incomplete. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I love all these old songs, and I started collecting. Um, uh, well, I was listening to all these old records and. And, and I was a big fan of Annette Hanshaw. She was the original, had the original success with Mean to Me, Why are they the Mean to Me? Uh. Yeah, and uh, Victoria Jackson has now taken her place and she does it in, in a very unique way. Um, but what that was the whole, question? The whole <laughs> You're doing great. I'm just mesmerized. But that whole period of music, that Tin Pan Alley kind of period yeah. between the wars, mm -hmm. um, we don't know that much about it. So part of what you're doing is introducing and uh, helping us experience yeah, that. The, the music was very romantic in those days. Mm. It was so sweet. And there were so many wonderful bands. And my gr father's, my father's father um, was a... Uh, a horse jockey uh, in Chicago, and then he um, rode for an, an owner 
in Colorado, and this is like in the, the um, first 10 years of um, the 20th century, and he um, uh, found, uh, he loved the horses, uh, never uh, stopped loving the horses, but he, he uh, decided to become a, um, um, a singer. And there were a lot of jobs in those days for musicians and singers. Uh, if you heard music in those days, somebody was playing the music. There, there were no recordings uh, yet, yet, you know, being used. And if you, you were a musician, and if you, you know, first of all, to be, to get in the union, it, it, the, the musicians' union was very powerful. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the most powerful unions in the country, uh, because uh, if you heard music, some musician was working. And if you could sight read orchestrations on your instrument, you could work anywhere, mm -hmm. anywhere. And um, uh, it was just a wonderful music was being produced. Uh, you know, all these wonderful. Com Cole Porter was doing his first uh, things in like, like 1910, and Irving Berlin, his first hit was 1912, I think. And uh, and all these wonderful music, and and um, and they were so romantic. All the mm. stories were romantic and sweet. And uh, well, we've lost that. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, well, we haven't when we get to hear the Johnny Crawford Orchestra. Yeah. And you are presenting that to us live and in performances all over and in the CD. Um, I want to, uh, without embarrassing you, I do have to read a couple of things. You've gotten incredible reviews, not only for your CD, Sweeping the Clouds Away, but also just your live performances. And so just is, there, is there anything referenced in there about? Me and uh, in the pen. No. Good. Okay. That's the part you told me not to tell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you told me specifically, don't talk about me being in the pen. Come on. I'm trying to help you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Take a listen to uh, what this reviewer from New City, Chicago, says. Uh, With Crawford as leader vocalist, the Johnny Crawford Dance Orchestra painstakingly seeks to perform music of that elegant bygone era, paying careful attention to the performance practices of the time. The overall effect of this extraordinary, optimistic, old-time party album is like hearing a collection of vintage 78s brought to life. Quite an impressive feat. Wow. Nice. <laughs> and one more, um, the Playboy Jazz Festival season kicked off featuring the Johnny Crawford Orchestra. As the band began to swing, Crawford switched from focus conductor to crooner with a smooth vocal style. Crawford sang and danced with grace and humor. One of the show's highlights, when the full brass section danced along with Crawford's spirited vocal delivery on George and Ira Gershwin's They All Laughed. And the performance closed uh, with Irving Berlin's Isn't This a Lovely Day as Crawford humorously twirled an umbrella. His enthusiastic, enthusiastic dance steps enlivened every vocal nuance and every beat. It was the perfect climax to this festival. Wow. Whoa. It's pretty great. Well, uh, it doesn't mention how the band was no, uh, dressed. How? Oh, in tails. I've seen you live. There's Aren't a, they dressed in tails as well, or is that just Well, you? at the Hollywood Bowl for, for the um, Playboy Jazz Festival, uh, we, we, um, I can't continue. Uh, <laughs> we, 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 we tried something new and fresh, and uh, uh, so. It didn't go over? Oh, it went over, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay, so okay. Let, let's finish up with the CD, Sweeping the Clouds Away. Do you have it here at the Western Film Fair? Can we? Yeah, you want me to go get it? No, <laughs> but I would love to show a CD. Maybe someone can get it for me. If, it's, if not, we'll come to your table and we'll, we'll, everyone will stop by and get a CD, but it's a fabulous okay, great. CD. Thanks. Just thrilled. Okay, now let's get back to Mark McCain. <gasps> oh. Okay. 
what I loved and what all of us loved about The Rifleman was that incredible relationship you had between you and Chuck Connors. That it really felt like a father and a son. And um, having done Matlock, where I was much older, but Andy Griffith and I had a, a chemistry. We weren't father and daughter, but we had that same kind of a feel. And what you, I understand you actually did have sort of that kind of relationship with him, even off camera. Yeah. Um, we were, you know, I, I, it was a miracle that I got that job because I didn't look anything like him. And um, he, he, he was astounding. Um, and, oh, I have to correct something. Um, his name was Chuck Connors, not Connors. Ah, Connors. Yeah, a lot, he, people think that it's an E in there. And what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> what that relationship was like, even off camera? Oh, yeah. Um, he was um, frisky. And uh, uh, he, he, he was, <laughs> he made me laugh all the time. Mm. And uh, we were best friends. And, uh, but I used to get mad at him because he would uh, we'd do, we'd be doing a close-up of me, and he'd be making faces at me off <sighs> camera, you know. And, and, uh, you know, it was a great exercise, but not with the camera rolling. And uh, <laughs> Probably at a moment where you're, like, practically in tears and yeah, having to really well, emote. He was, he was getting back at me because they had to make sure that I got three hours of schooling right. in before 4 o'clock. And so, you know, I was, if I was, had a lot of scenes to do and rehearse, uh, you know, as soon as we had done a re rehearsal, they, they, they would just, while they were setting up the lights and stuff, I was dashed to the uh, saloon or whatever there was a place for me to study, and, um, um, and 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 so in those cases they got they got a because he complained that he he had to give all his close-ups to a script a clerk, mm. um, you know, <laughs> and it didn't give him much to work by, but he had a good um, imagination and. And, and but to make it easier for him, they got a, a life size, life size cutout of him. Oh. I don't talk too too good anymore, you know. But um, but you I, sing great. I, I can, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a thing for every. There's there's a. What's the next word? There's a dream for. Anyway, so they, they they just cut out, and they would put it beside the camera for the, his close-up, and he resented that. So, mm. so he was getting back at me when I was doing my close-up, you know, oh. and, you know oh. and he was kind of a, a childish, you know, in that way. Oh, <laughs> but I didn't tell him that, you know. <laughs> of I, course not. No. <laughs> because he was bigger than me. <laughs> Yeah, quite a bit. He yeah. was a tall man. Very tall. And um, I, Andy Griffith used to constantly talk about, tell stories with, um, about Opie. And he would always say little Ronnie Howard stories. So I'm sure Chuck had plenty of uh, little Mark stories, little Johnny Crawford stories. Did you, did you pull any pranks? Did oh, you yeah. pull any pranks on Oh, him? yeah. We would oh. do it together. Oh, you did? Yeah. Tell us a prank or two. Yeah, I wanted to be known for my pranks, you know, and, and then he got involved. And I was give, giving, uh, you know, matches, uh, hot feet, you know, you know, and, and, and to everyone in the, ca to, uh, in the group, in the, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and w that we got a lot of laughs and, uh, and w I had to stay after school. <laughs> in the saloon. Yeah. <laughs> or sometimes in the jail. You know, where, where or in the jail. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a magical thing. Um, yeah, I um, I was in heaven. I loved westerns, uh, you know, old dance band records and westerns, and uh, that those were my loves. And I was a big fan of Will Rogers mm. and and. Uh, the, the the silent cowboys, you know, uh, Tim Holt and uh, uh, f uh, uh, William S. Hart mm -hmm. and uh, Tom Mix and Ken Maynard and and all the 
the the stunts in the silent films oh my gosh they were just amazing mm. and, and uh, they didn't have to worry about sound and 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 there were so many great stunt uh, guys um, and uh, I wanted to be a stunt guy but I in a way I I became a stunt person because well, yeah. I'm I'm only five foot two. <laughs> no, I'm a little more than that. <laughs> but at the time, you were probably and you you yeah, rope a, and you ride yeah. and you've done rodeo work yeah. and and I fall off. I remember <laughs> practicing falling off my horse while he was galloping. You know, I, oh, I yeah, kept yeah. a horse and in on Riverside Drive in Burbank and uh, and and there were. Uh, when I, I kept a horse, I had a horse, and I would um, go to the stables every day um, that I wasn't shooting the rifleman. And the, our crew would be doing an episode of Wanted Dead or Alive, and I would have three days off. And I, I got my schooling done by noon. My dad picked me up and dropped me off at the stables. And, um, and uh, other kids that had horses there, wouldn't get there until after school let out at two, three o'clock. And I, so I was alone with my horse all that time. And uh, we, we did a lot of stuff together. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I, we, I was, it was very affectionate. He, he was, you know, we were, we he, got very close and uh, we almost had to get married, you know. <laughs> 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 but no. He was he was wonderful. I called him Two Bits. Oh, he did a lot of westerns besides Rifleman. Um, I did, yeah. <clears throat> Before the Rifleman, <clears throat> I wanted to be in westerns and musicals, and uh, you know, they're so similar, you know. Um, and <laughs> I wanted to be uh, a tap dancer like like uh, Donald O'Connor, make people laugh, and mm. and, stuff. and I wanted to uh, um, be. Uh, um, a cowboy, and I didn't know if it would be proper to be a tap dancing cowboy unless somebody was shooting at my feet or something. But, <laughs> uh, so it, it was, uh, you know, uh, trying to make up my mind where I wanted to go with my uh, business. Um, but you also, even as a, a young guy, you were an idol to teenage girls across America with your singing career. Um, you had five Billboard Top 40 hits, including songs you all will remember, Cindy's Birthday, Rumors, and Patty Your nose Ann. is going to grow. <laughs> I didn't have a choice. They, 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 they brought the songs to me and told me what to sing. And, but I, some, I, I was actually very lucky. Um, Bob Keane was the head of the Belt Delphi Records, and they found out that I could sing, and in 1961, I started recording with him, and they brought in uh, some wonderful songwriters, and uh, Cindy's birthday is, uh, I'm very proud of that. that mm -hmm. That's, but it's not, I'm, I'm singing it, but the orchestration is wonderful. The mm -hmm. violins come in, and it's so sweet, mm -hmm. and... Uh, so that helped fuel your passion for later on to create yeah. your own orchestra. Yeah. Well, where can our fa your fans reach you? Do you have a website? How can they find you to find out what you're up to and what performances you're, you've got coming up in concerts? Well, it's hard to get in touch with me. Or just um, see what you're up to. Just ask the IRS. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's true. Um, is Facebook the best place? Facebook. Be? Facebook. Oh, please go to my good. Facebook page. I'm so I love Facebook, and Reverb Nation is a, a wonderful tool for musicians, and um, you, and please like my Facebook page. I I try to share photographs. I have so many photographs to share from over the years, and sometimes there'll there'll be little snapshots from a brownie, but uh, but. Um, I always post something before the end of the week, and and usually a couple of times. Uh, and I love the 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 comments that people leave. It, mm -hmm. I'm I'm very fortunate um, that the rifleman 
is still being shown. And yes. I never would have thought that it would be. And, and then people, you know, a few years ago started telling me that they see it all the time. And I said, said they're crazy and it's not on television anymore. It and, is. And, but now it's on every weekday. Um, they show two episodes back to back. Yeah. And in the middle of the afternoon, uh, and uh, uh, Sundays on uh, MeTV, uh, yeah. and Saturday mornings, they show multiple episodes of The Rifleman on AMC. Mm. And as a result, um, my, my Facebook page was, was, what's the word, languishing? Um, is that the word? Uh, it's a good word. Uh, okay, just just you know, going along. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I had a few hundred fans, and then now I, I just uh, la last week, <laughs> last week I I had uh, one hundred thousand fans. Oh my gosh, Johnny, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, you certainly have a lot of fans here at the uh, Western Film yeah. Fair and at Victory Television Network, and you have a big fan in me. Thank you so much for joining You're us. You're so sweet. <laughs> <laughs>